So watches have a history that's always going to be connected to the military. They were commonly used on the battlefield throughout the 20th century and were useful tools at that. But now that we've moved into the 21st century, the connection is not as strong as it once was, but still there are many great pieces out there basically paying tribute to these periods or just kind of embodying the design attributes that would come from these pieces of years prior. So in this video, what I wanna look at is some of the best military inspired pieces. Maybe not pieces that would necessarily be on the wrist of true active military personnel, but watches that really embody an era in which this was the case. So how we're going to do this is going to break down a few different categories, basically looking at field watches, dive watches, pilot aviation style watches, those three categories, few watches within each of those categories that I think represent what those are all about. The other consideration here is we are going to look at a variety of different price ranges, but the only thing I'll add is they generally are going to be towards the more attainable end, just considering a lot of these heritage military style watches really were kind of more in that range as you're not really dealing with luxury goods if you're going to actually see uh, military action. Before we jump into this video, definitely check out the blog looking at some of the best military style watches out there. If you like watches of this type and you just want more to look at, check out the blog down below. It will be in the description. Spent quite a bit of time putting that together and that could be a great jumping off point if you're just looking for more options out there. Now, when looking under $500 for a field watch, there's a lot of competition. But in terms of brands that actually have history in the category, one brand that I don't think gets enough just recognition and appreciation is Bulova. And the first watch we're gonna be looking at here is Bulova with their VWI hack watch. Now, this is a cool watch for two reasons. For one, I think a lot of people overlook the idea that Bulova was actually producing field watches during World War II, as the A11 field watch was issued by several watch brands during the war. I just wanna bring that up because a lot of people when posting an Instagram photo were quick to comment saying this is a ripoff of of Hamilton. It's not true. Bulova and Hamilton were both providing watches for the Allied forces during the war. So they both have their own history in this field. No pun intended. This is one of the more affordable automatic options from Bulova. In terms of a design perspective, I just absolutely love the look of this piece. It has that 1940s military style feel, which I think they just nailed it out of the park. Wearability is pretty similar to a lot of other field watches out there. 38 millimeters, 47 millimeter lug to lug. So pretty much on par with Hamilton khaki. It is going to be a bit thicker though. It 13.55 millimeters thick. It's also going to be contributed by the dome mineral crystal on this watch as well. The only other thing that I'll mention here is this VWI variant actually benefits veterans of the US military. This watch is a special edition of the standard hack watch designed in collaboration with the Veterans Watch Initiative, a nonprofit organization that provides free of charge watchmaking training for veterans, especially disabled veterans. So if you're in the US, I think this is a great cause to also support on top of that. But from a design perspective alone, I just love the looks of this one. Now next up here, we have the Seiko Alpinist looking at the SPB 155, 157, that series of variations. Now you could probably put any of the Alpinist models in here. And in terms of actually having true military roots, it's not as strong as some other watches on this list. But in terms of just kind of giving off that same level of heritage from a field watch perspective, and just being a great product for the price, these are probably some of my favorite contemporary watches that Seiko makes. These watches are commonly referred to as the baby Alpinist for the lack of the additional crown at the typical four o'clock position. 38 millimeter case, 46 millimeter lug to lug, so pretty restrained dimensions. Also getting a nice 70 hour power reserve with the 6R35 family of movements, so an upgrade there with that power reserve, but still getting all the same benefits that came with the Alpinist series. 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, excellent loom, maybe some of the best in the category for a field watch, while also coming in a variety of different colors. So when looking at the field watch category, I think it's very hard to not include Hamilton. You can look at the Hamilton khaki field automatic, mechanical, but I wanna throw another one into the mix here, one that kind of combines some actual utility with some pop cultural flair, and that is with the Hamilton Khaki Murph. So this watch in terms of a design perspective is one of my favorite designs that Hamilton creates. I don't think it maybe gets as much play just given the size, but also the connection to Christopher Nolan's Interstellar and the small tie-ins with the second hand spelling out Eureka in Morse code all adds to the flair around this piece and why I think so many people enjoy it. Much of the same qualities that come with the Hamilton Khaki series are also present here. A well-finished case, prominent lugs, an 80 hour power reserve at a 
base movement on the inside that's going to be modified by the swatch group. Sapphire Crystal, this one actually comes with some decent water resistance as well at 100 meters. The wearing dimensions are going to be larger on this piece and you are getting a difference in handset, which I think actually does an incredible job working with the overall design of this piece. And although the sizing as well as the true military connection here is a bit off compared to maybe some of the other models that you can mention from the Hamilton Khaki Collection, but for maybe a larger wrist or somebody who loves the film or just likes Hamilton's history with field watches and wants something different, this is a great one to consider. So now moving into our dive watch category, first two watches are going to have some overlap in terms of the design influence, one being a little bit closer to home, the other one being kind of an offshoot of that. Now the two options that we're looking at here is with the Mark II Paradive and then the Benris Type 1. So I want to mention both of these watches because they really stem back to these classic military style dive watches that were really made popular by Benris as a brand. And there are many manufacturers now kind of doing their own take on this type of watch. Mark II is an American micro brand from the days before micro brands. They've been in the industry for quite some time, steadily producing military inspired watches since 2002. They're very well respected and deliver a great product. I would actually say in the comparison of both of these with the Mark II being a bit cheaper, I find the case finishing a bit more refined for the money. Moving over to Benris, this brand was really revitalized in the last few years, now having different ownership, but still trying to maintain those military dive watch roots with what they're delivering here. Now, in terms of, again, of the finishing from a side to side with the Mark II, I find this one's lagging behind a bit. But if you're more of a purist and want to stay true to those military dive watch roots that this brand was really a trailblazer are in creating, it probably would make more sense to go in this direction. Now, next up here, we have another watch from Bulova. And Bulova, again, I just don't think they get their appreciation that they probably deserve when it comes to their rich archive. I think they're finally starting to tap into it a bit more. The next watches we have here are the Bulova Mill Ships. Now, these watches were based off of a late 1950s prototype developed for the US Navy by Bulova. They didn't actually end up getting the contract or pursuing it any further. It actually went to Tornek Rayville, basically a rebadged Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms as a way to circumvent the laws of the period. But this watch really came to to be after a collector brought forth this watch to Bulova, where it almost eluded their archive for some time, and they decided to create a one-to-one -one comparison. Now, some aspects of that one-to-one -one direct tribute is going to create some challenges. It does have a push down to click bezel. The 16 millimeter lugs, as well as the bezel action, are definitely a shot from the past in terms of what they're delivering here. It's not as much contemporary in its form. Also, there are two variants. There's a Miyota powered one, as well as a Swiss Salita powered one. That one going to be a limited edition. For myself, I like the dome crystal of the Salita variant, as well as just some of the additional looks in its favor. I also find it a bit problematic to be looking at a watch just south of $900 using an eight series movement from Miyota. So in terms of value, maybe not the most compelling on the list, but in regards to interesting backstory, as well as looks, it certainly is worthy of being mentioned here. Now, next up here, we have a watch that is actually the source of some drama in the industry. I know we all love watch drama, and that is with the Synchron Military. Now, just to set the stage for the contention at play here, now Synchron, if you're not familiar with the name, was actually the owner and operator of Doxa throughout part of the 20th century. Doxa being a brand with some very rich history in regards to their dive watches. I would probably say they're in the upper echelon of dive watch brands for what they've contributed. But throughout the 1970s, when Doxa was being operated by Synchron, they produced a watch called the Doxa Army, a super obscure watch allegedly produced for the Swiss military in the early early 1970s, though the actual history is somewhat in question. But since the operation of Doxa and Synchron was restructured a few years ago, basically the individual who was responsible for Synchron and what they were doing on that side developed their own watch after things kind of fell in a less than amicable way in terms of the relationship. So in essence, this watch is a embodiment and recreation or homage to that Doxa army from the 1970s when Synchron was at the helm of control for the Doxa family of watches. This has led to some petty back and forth on social media in terms of throwing shots at one another between the two brands. Uh, but just looking at this watch and what it's delivering, I think it's a pretty solid and interesting piece. It has a 42 millimeter diameter, but the lug to lug are at 45 millimeters, so pretty nice there. 200 meters of water resistance. You also have an automatic ETA 28242 and a clear sapphire crystal that also provides view of the dial underneath. So next up here, we have the Oris Diver 65 
Carl Brashear edition. Now, I'm a huge fan of the types of individuals that Oris connects themselves with when they are doing some of these limited edition or special edition pieces. I was a huge fan of the Roberto Clemente edition that they did as a baseball fan. But in terms of connecting themselves with ultimately one of the biggest badasses that ever walked the earth, Carl Brashear, this piece is just a lot of fun. So I won't go into the entire story as I do have a full video looking at this piece and talking about a little bit of the backstory of Carl Brashear. Carl Brashear lived a life of great inspiration as well as overcoming many obstacles thrown his way. Becoming a US Navy diver as an African American during the period was enough of an accomplishment, but during a tragic accident, he actually lost his left leg and was amputated in 1966. But that didn't stop him from coming back and becoming a master diver for the US Navy. I definitely recommend checking out my full video reviewing this piece, but also in addition to that, checking out Men of Honor. It was a movie based on his life that might give a little more context to who he was as an individual. But moving back over to the watch, this is one of the early adoptions of the Caliber 400, this one with the Caliber 401 by Oris. It offers that 120 hour power reserve, 10 year service interval with a warranty, resistance against magnetism, and a minus three to plus five second a day range of deviation for accuracy. Also the bronze case in this instance works incredibly well given the old school brass diving helmets worn by the US Navy during the period of Carl Brashear. I think Oris just did a great job with all the tie-ins for this piece and all the looks that come along with it. So now moving on to pilot watches, we first have Hamilton with the Hamilton Khaki Aviation Pilot Pioneer. Now from a looks perspective, this is a bit different and deviates from the traditional design formula that comes with Hamilton's Khaki collection. But in regards to the history of this timepiece, it resembles strongly the W10, a pilot watch made for the British Ministry of Defense from 1973 to 1976. CWC does deserve an honorable mention here as well because they were also pioneers of that design. But in terms of probably the best modern representation of that, I think we have to look at this model. In terms of a case, it is going to be a smaller watch, which for some might be a great upside, for others might be a downside. So 36 millimeters by 42 millimeters with that lug to lug, pretty thin on the wrist as well, coming underneath 10 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters, and then a manual H50 caliber on the inside. There is a mineral crystal on this one, which is going to make it look a bit more vintage-esque in terms of its just dome profile compared to the sapphire. Also bypassing the common issue that comes with many Hamilton khaki field models, the reflections from the crystal on a black dial. In this instance, great legibility, and there's almost this kind of graphite look and texture to that dial surface that truly pops when looking at it underneath. Next up, we have a classic Flieger watch with the Laco Dortmund. When looking at the history of pilot watches or Flieger style watches, Laco is on a short list with incredible heritage in this arena. In terms of this particular model, this is gonna be a bit more in alignment with the sizing and styling that came with watches during World War II. Laco was one of the original big five and producers of Flieger style watches. They have changed ownership in recent years, but still are producing some of the best Fliegers in the category. Those original Navigator Flieger style watches worn during World War II were actually even larger than this 45 millimeter case, but I think this is a nice happy middle ground between looking back to the past and offering up the perks that came with those watches of great legibility and being able to go over a flight jacket while still offering up some modern wearability where it's not so huge that it couldn't be worn in a more regular context. This watch comes with a classic manual at a caliber on the inside, water resistance of 50 meters, a nice sapphire crystal, and some of the best legibility that you're going to find. For our last watch, we have the Glycine. Airman. And for Glycine and the Airman, it's a watch that it's a great one to mention, of course, but they're becoming a little bit tougher to get your hands on. I'm not sure what the deal is with Glycine distribution in the last few years, but it's a little bit uncertain on where you can even get these pieces. You kind of have to just go all over the internet and just try to find a listing of them because it doesn't seem like they have anything centralized. But in terms of the history going behind this piece, maybe some of the actual truest military history of any of the watches mentioned here. So the Glycine Airman was released even before that of the Rolex GMT Master II using a 24 hour scale in order to judge an additional time zone. But it really wasn't until the Vietnam War when these watches started to become even more popular amongst military personnel. They were widely available at PXs during the Vietnam War and many soldiers used them as their watch on the wrist. For the modern examples, there are several different variations. The classic 40 number one is going to be probably the most most true to the original, but in terms of true military style and roots, the Glycine Airman has to be mentioned on this list.
But all right, guys, that's my list looking at some of the best vintage military inspired watches out there. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Also be sure to check out the blog down below looking at a list of some of the best military watches. Might be additional nice jumping off point if you're interested in watches of this style. Also teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we carry. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content that we're creating here. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.